Hey everyone, it's Monday, March 9th. Let's get right to what the stock market is doing. The expectation and fear is that we will see markets in free fall this morning here in the U.S. as they have done in the global markets already today. Let's get right to CNBC's Becky Quick, who is at the stock exchange for us. Becky, this is expected, but here we go. Uh, the numbers are already in free fall. That's right. Uh, Savannah, this morning we had been looking at the futures down by 5%. As you mentioned, that's limit down. That as far as they will allow the futures to trade down before the opening bell. But in the very first moments of trading here, you're seeing uh, the stock market move well below that. Right now, it looks like the Dow is down by about 6.9%. This is some massive pressure. If you haven't looked at your 401k over the last couple of weeks, I wouldn't recommend doing it today because uh, just over the last two weeks, we had already seen the markets down by about 12%, a little more than that. Now you're adding declines of more than 7% today. Now, the 7% that we're sitting at right now, that would kick in additional circuit breakers if we get to these levels. The uh, new circuit breakers are there to try and prevent panic selling, which is what you might be looking at right now. The circuit breakers they, kicks it, kick in when, Becky? At what for, percentage? For the S&P, for the S&P 500, the circuit breaker would kick in down 7%. If we are looking at down 7% for the S&P 500, you will see a pause in trading for 15 minutes. Then if you see the S&P trading down 13% from those original levels where it closed on Friday, it would pause again for another 15 minutes. And then if you see a 20% decline at any point uh, before 3.25 p.m., because the markets close at 4 p.m., if you see a decline of 20%, the market would actually halt trading for the day. Now, it's worth pointing out that we have not seen these uh, circuit breakers triggered since they went into effect in 2013, at least not at these levels. We'll be watching this very closely because you're sitting near those levels right now. I'm looking at the S&P right now down by, by 6.95%. So we are near those levels where you would see some circuit breakers kick in. With cases soaring to more than 7,000 infected and 366 deaths, a 30% spike overnight, the most fatalities outside of China. Travel in and out of 14 northern provinces restricted until April, including the city of Venice, a tourist favorite, and the massive Lombardy region, home to fashion capital Milan. An eerie quiet in both cities' iconic sites on Sunday, but overnight, panic at this train station. Passengers desperate to escape, fearful trains would be shutting down. Weddings and funerals postponed. Ski resorts, gyms and malls closed. Visitors banned from the Vatican Museum. Pope Francis praying for the victims of the epidemic through live stream, sealed off from worshipers. Then surprising a few pilgrims with a quick wave from his balcony over St. Peter's Square. Tonight, the unprecedented quarantine, winning praise from the WHO, its chief calling it a courageous step to protect the Italian people. Never give up. I'll repeat that. The rule of the game is never give up. We're encouraged that Italy is taking aggressive measures to contain the, its epidemic, and we hope that those measures prove effective in the coming days. Let hope be the antidote to fear. Let solidarity be the antidote to blame. Let our shared humanity be the antidote to our shared threat. The great advantage we have is that the decisions we all make as governments Businesses, communities, families, and individuals can influence the trajectory of this ep epidemic. We need to remember that with decisive early action, we can slow down the virus and prevent infections. Among those who are infected, most will recover. Of the 80,000 reported cases in China, more than 70% have recovered and have been discharged. Yeah, I think we've reached a predictable tipping point where there's going to be a rapid acceleration in cases here in the United States. We still have a narrow window of opportunity to implement tough mitigation steps that could prevent a very large epidemic in, this, in the United States, but we're losing time, and we need to start taking more aggressive steps right now to try to contain the large outbreaks that are in probably multiple U.S. cities right now. Um, to prevent a broader epidemic and try to get to a point where we don't exhaust the healthcare system. The goal is to try to make sure that the peak of this epidemic, and we are headed for an epidemic here in the United States, 
You know, the one thing I will say that's very interesting, I flew this weekend. The airlines have done nothing to step up practices on the airplane. A stewardess was not wearing gloves. They weren't passing out personal hygiene products like Purell. You know, if the airlines are worried about reduced volumes and want to inspire confidence in travelers, they should be stepping up the measures, guaranteeing that they're doing deep cleaning on airplanes and not requiring There's passengers no to wipe down. There's no way they can do down. deep cleaning when, when you turn around a flight that quickly. I mean, you well, watch how quickly they, they turn those things. Maybe they happen. have to add more time so that they can wipe down seats better. But if they would step forward and tell the public that they're doing that, maybe the public would feel more confident about getting on airplanes right now. After 9-11, they stepped up security. And that helped inspire some confidence to get back on the airlines. They've done nothing, absolutely nothing that I've seen that was visible to me. Do you think that people broadly should travel? I don't think we're at the point where people should shut down their travel right now. And I don't think we should ever get to the point where we cordon off parts of this country and prevent people from traveling. I do think people need to be more aware of being in crowded uh, environments. And on an airplane, it's not the air quality that worries me. I don't think this spreads easily through the air on an airplane. I think it's more of the touching of the surfaces and the unclean surfaces uh, and passing things back and forth between passengers. What Starbucks did to stop refilling cups that people bring in for their own coffee, the barrister, that's brilliant because what would happen is someone would bring in their dirty cup if they maybe had coronavirus, give it to the barrister, barrister would touch the cup and then touch the next 30 cups. If all businesses thought about steps like that, simple things that they can do to re reduce transmission, we could really have an impact on this. But we need leadership. We need to be talking about these things in a systematic fashion. We also need a systematic approach to when localities close schools, close businesses, cancel large events. We need to be all working off the same kind of playbook.